Hey, I'm Ryan Bramley from Kirtley's Local TV, here to introduce part two of our public eye interview with Stevie Morley from Take 10. Now, as you can probably see from behind me, I've been working at home, and I know many of you have been as well. And the main reason for that is because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Incidentally, COVID-19 is something that me and Stevie talk about a lot in part two. And Stevie discusses not only how she and her organisation have been able to support people with mental health illnesses and conditions over the last few months, but how they as an organisation themselves have also been supported by others too. Here it is. So again, I, I see what you, what you do is kind of filling in that, that necessary gap again. And, and that for me comes on to what I think is a really important point about how Take 10 is supported. So you say about, you know, certainly I think the people that, that for, for want of a better phrase, use your service, mm-hmm. um, see the value of it. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure people in the community, and certainly me listening, I can see the value of it. But in terms of like kind of funding or in terms of like kind of, like you say, you've got your own place and things like that. Um, how do you go about that? Right. Well, it's been a massive struggle. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, so as yet, so anybody out there, I'll put it out now. If you want to help me with these funding bids, I beg you, please do, because they all get rejected. Um, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Um, I'm really rubbish at them. I'll, I won't lie. Um, so how we're funded is the general public who love the work that we do, people that see what we do, um, they, they, they raise money, they've done walks, they've had their heads shaved, um, one of the lads um, who I've just recently met up with, Carl Whitworth, he all the way through COVID has been doing um, this Wednesday night thing where Wednesday night, Thursday night gets together, seven o'clock, and he does a live um, and he was doing workouts, sit ups, press ups. People were donating money. He raises 1,700, um, you know, and, and that was just through putting himself out there. But what he did is, Cal put himself out there and talked about him and his life as well, which people like took a step back and went, wow, would you know what I mean? I wouldn't have thought that or I didn't know that. Um, so, we, yeah, we have got zone premises. Unfortunately, we got it the week before lockdown, not knowing lockdown were going to happen. Um, so we're running out of money. <laughs> I won't lie. Uh, we're at a bit of a, a worrying state at the minute, whether or not we're going to be able to continue um, to, to run as we haven't run from there yet which is a problem um, we've run groups from different offices like Kirkley's offices and such but this one's ours so we could you know we rent it from um, a, a man <laughs> uh, and you know we, we've done lots of work in it to make it great for people for after Covid um, but unfortunately you know money don't last forever and there's still rent to pay which has been a bit of a a taboo subject for us because we've paid a lot of money out in rent with we thought we were going to be okay before covid we we're like yeah that's great because we've got this money um this fundraiser come in we've got this fundraiser we had everything planned out and then covid's come crashed it all down um but fingers crossed we're at a time now where mental health is going to be like the next thing that it should have always been the main topic of conversation throughout life anyway um but during covid it's really peaked it to the top um people losing their jobs losing their houses losing just people just losing literally um you know so i'm hoping that the there's somebody out there that might say do you know what take 10 this is what you're doing it's amazing we want to help you so if there's anyone out there please do um uh, I'm not going to say no. I'll put your name on anything you want. I'll have it tattooed on my forehead. Um, I really don't mind. Um, desperate times, desperate measures. But we need to keep on doing what we're doing because it's so valuable within the community. Um, you know, uh, at a later date, I'm sure if you if you wanted to speak to any of, of our uh, people who come to our group, they love doing little interviews and stuff and talking about it. You know, they live and breathe take ten. So for two near two years, we've had a group on a Wednesday where people have come together every Wednesday for two years. Even during even during Christmas, we meet up and they've, they've had that every Wednesday, they've lived for it. You know, one of the ladies will tell you um, herself, I live for my Wednesdays, it's what gets me through my week because it's, it's breaking everything up and I'm with my friends, you know, and they spend from 10 o'clock until half two there 
kicking them out at half two, it's three o'clock going, you know, <laughs> we must leave this building, we can't stay any longer. Um, but it's a massive family community spirit and feeling when when you're there. So mm. it's it's just needed so much right the, the difference without it has been heartbreaking, you know. I'm still speaking to the people who, who come to group and they're just like, Steve, we really need to be back and I'm I'm trying with everything that I have. Um to, to make that happen but what 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 can we do you know we're we're at a loss aren't we you know again <laughs> covid's uh, caused some issues for us it has and and i think you know certainly i think you're right in saying that it's raised a lot of issues to people who because I, I've, like you say, I've known for a long time, you've known for a long time that this is an incredibly important issue, mental health in, in all its uh, yeah. ways and forms. And, you know, it, I almost feel like COVID, and again, I don't know if you'd agree with this, actually, you're probably in a better position than I am, given the work that you do. Whether you think that COVID has actually opened more people up to having difficult and open conversations about mental health and well-being. <laughs> I think it's changed the conversation about mental health and well-being and I think it's made personally I think it's made like some diversity within it and um, so for myself for many years I've had people who say to me oh Steve get a grip do you know what what's so bad in your life what's this what's that and I'm like I've struggled to explain to people that the emptiness feeling that you get now these people are going what do I do what do I do and I'm like, it's not a, how, how do you say it without it sounding like cliche? It's not a I told you so situation. It's, well, now do you understand? You know, because for many years, we've, people have looked and gone, oh, you know, we, we've done it. I've been guilty of it myself. I used to see people on the streets and go, God, she's nuts there. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and people have been. You know, there's generally had mental health illnesses and we've, we've thought nothing of it. We've been very flippant in the terminology that we use. Um, and some people now are coming forward who didn't think they had mental health illnesses that actually have suffered a long time. And now they're going, now I feel bad, Steve, because I should never have thought, thought that way about X, Y, or Z, you know. Oh, that person I feel bad for because I used to think she were nuts, you know. I mean, they all take Mickey out of me. I'm not bothered. You know, I am nuts full on I'm very diverse I'm a very unique person that definitely whoever created me broke the mold <laughs> just so that it can never be used again because the world can't cope with two of me you know um but I think like what Covid's done is it's sort of shown people that when we look at loneliness so people say to me Steve you can't be lonely look at how many people you've got and I'm like listen being alone and being lonely is completely different I'm alone right now. Well, I'm not. I'm with you in a weird way <laughs> through Zoom. But, <laughs> but I'm in house alone, but I'm not alone and I don't feel lonely today. But tomorrow I'm going away to Scarborough and I'm going to be surrounded by a lot of people. I could possibly feel very lonely. And it's not that people aren't there that care about me. It's just the mindset of that, that, that feeling that day, that, that process that you wake up with, you know, what's today got in store for me, sort of thing. And for some of these people that have lost their jobs, um, struggling with childcare, struggling to to keep a home, you know, I'm I'm very lucky. Um, I'm very. I say this in the weirdest way. I live in a rented accommodation. I'm lucky. I'm very lucky because if I didn't live in rented accommodation, I don't know where I'd be right now. I don't know what would happen, you know. Um, could I afford to pay a mortgage? Can you afford to pay a mortgage? Can people afford to eat the food? What do you do? Do you pay? Do you pay mortgage? Do you eat your food? It's wrecked people's lives, um, you know. And I, I, I'm seeing it every single day. People that have never struggled in the life and just gone about life willy nilly now breaking down on street corners because literally they don't know what to do. Um, and it's a different kind of mental health because this is a very environmental development of mental health um, based on the trauma of COVID. Um, and it is a trauma, you know, for a lot of people, they're going through the biggest traumas of their life. The marriage is breaking up, the relationships are breaking up, you know, people are dying without having any comfort, you know, they're not getting a chance to say goodbye to the loved ones. People are going in hospital, never see them again. 
you know you've not got chance to go and just even for example have an open coffin if that's the way that you, you you know you would deal with a death of a loved one all that's taken away so basically what what they've done is said there that's that's your life now live it but there's there's no life there it's existence and that's it you know and as we're coming out of it we're going back into it so we're in another situation now we've just met back up with his family and friends some people some still haven't seen the the family and friends Saturday is going to be a big event for a lot of people because first of August is when a lot of people who were on the 12 week in 12 week whatever it were called I've forgotten um, shielding. shielding that's the one they can now go out and meet the loved ones what until until the second um of August then you can all go back in again for another 12 weeks it's just it's so uncertain it, you know and wait, you, you said earlier on about end of life care um, and you know when when I go to people who are in crisis that's basically how I treat that situation then people people who are at the at, at that crisis point they need end of life care they need helping and loving and looking after and and supporting just the same as the people who were laid in an hospital bed who were, who were taking the last breath because inside that is the last breath you know that is the the, the fighting just the same and that's where again with Matt Miller when, when you see them and they're all hands, you should be doing that with mental health you know release the restrictions let them all dance <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> please <laughs> You know, um, so and and yeah, so yeah. So the answer to your question is, it's changing mental health. It's making people more aware of mental health in different formalities. People all of a sudden are realizing what the hell anxiety is. It's just about protecting each other, but I don't think we're doing a good job, Ryan. I'll be honest with you. I don't.